Hi, I'm Maria Thea Harris or Velosos on social media, and you're listening to this So Organized Style podcast for the So Busty community. Stay listening. So Organized Style podcast acknowledges traditional owners of country throughout Australia. We pay our respects to Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander cultures and to the elders past, present and emerging. Welcome back to So Organised Style Podcast. Today we're here to talk about the current sew along being hosted on the Sew Busty community. Lindsay Rank was on the podcast recently talking about Sew Busty and the Busty Pattern Database. So Busty Community is a place for busty sewers of all sizes to come together for inspiration, resources and support. Today, our So Busty guest is Brittany of Untitled Thoughts to chat about the August and September challenge, which is the Buttons Challenge and the Armoury Dress. Thank you so much, Brittany, for coming back on the podcast. Thank you so much for having me back. This has been so much fun. <laughs> it's really great to see that this particular challenge on So Busty is being run over two months, isn't it? It is. I think that two months is the perfect amount of time to partake in a sew along. I know that when I've tried to take part in a sew along that's in one month, trying to fit it into that month, like I had every intention of doing it and then I missed the deadline. It's like, ah. Oh. And it feels so much more stressful than it needs to be, right? Every challenge is achievable. It's just trying to make sure that you get it done in the time frame. Exactly. Because life always happens. It always comes up and it's like, oh gosh, I got to go put out these fires. Brittany, why was the Armoury dress chosen for this challenge? Lindsay and I had been chatting about possibly collaborating on some blog posts when she emailed me to ask me if I'd be interested in doing a sew along with the Amelie, which I thought was such a fun idea. And I think it was chosen for a couple of different reasons. It has a ton of buttons up the back, so it fits perfectly for the button challenge. I think that one of them has a total of 11 buttons and then another view has like 15 buttons. So wow. <laughs> definitely perfect for buttons. And then the other thing is the bodice is actually offered in both a B cup and a double D cup draft. Mm -hmm. So there are more options for busty sewists to just dive right into sewing. And there's a bra friendly option to the pattern as well. So I think that these three things are the reason that Lindsay actually chose the Amelie for this challenge. So what feedback have you received about this challenge so far? I actually haven't received much feedback about this particular challenge, but I have actually been really inspired with some future hacks for the Amelie to make it more accessible. One of my favorite things about the Amelie are, of course, the buttons up the back of the dress. Yep. However, <laughs> those buttons aren't the best for any sewists who may have trouble getting in and out with back closures or find themselves sitting for most of the day. Mm -hmm. I have been thinking on this and I've just been inspired to come up with some solutions for the Amelie to make the current closure system more accessible. And so I'm working towards making more tutorials and having those ready when I redo the Amelie. What type of options are you looking at at the moment? So I'm thinking of finding ways to either make the buttons like snaps, adding snap options mm -hmm. for those who maybe have trouble getting in and out of it. I was looking at possibly doing some sort of elasticated waistband mm -hmm. so that you can get in and out of it without actually having to unbutton it moving the buttons completely maybe to the front side of the dress and mm. having like a zip up the side. So there's like a bunch of different ideas running around in my head that I think could help those who want that option. One of the things that I was just thinking about was if you're going to change the armory dress for this challenge for people who are seated, because it's part of the So Busty Challenge, the real benefit for people who are taking part is having a dress that fits them well around their chest, isn't it? Mm -hmm, definitely. Yeah. Making sure that it still properly fits. And I want to keep that same fit mm -hmm. um, as much as possible and just, yeah, trying to find ways to tweak it. When you design the Armoury dress, what made you decide to design it so that you've got a couple of different chest sizes? 
So this was right around the time that the sewing community was talking about inclusivity within pattern design. And so I, at that time, I was really like paying attention and listening. I hadn't really put out many patterns yet. The Amelie is actually the first pattern I put out under Untitled Thoughts as a real business. <laughs> so with all that information, I just knew that I wanted to make this pattern incredibly inclusive or as inclusive as I possibly could being a one person <laughs> run brand. And so I was thinking about the fact that it was an open back and how there are lots of people who have to wear bras and wanting to accommodate that, but still maintaining that open back feel because just because you have to wear a bra doesn't mean that you want a super high neck back every single dress design, you know? So I was trying to figure out how I could make a bra friendly back and then also adding cup sizes because everyone is a different cup size. And I didn't know this until that time in the sewing community that I was even designing with a B cup block because in school, I went to school for design. They never told us that. (laughs) They were just like, here's how you design. Here's the math, go at it. And then so to find out like, oh, everything's designed with a B cup. That doesn't seem fair. I want to change that. I want to see how I can make this better. (laughs) So that's really where the whole idea for designing the Amelie with two bra backs and two bust sizes came from. So that's why I really started to design it with a B cup and a double D cup in mind. And this was all happening around the same time in the sewing community that there was a lot of discussion about inclusivity in sewing patterns. And I was like really paying attention to that. And I was like, okay, how can I make my pattern help other sewists? How can I make it to where they don't have to do as much work to get the garment that they want to fit properly? As you went down that path of making sure that people who have to wear a bra could still make the armory, did you have patent testers who helped you out to make sure that what you designed worked? Yes. And there were a lot of issues in the beginning <laughs> with the pattern. So I learned a lot in designing the Amelie and um, working with testers. It was actually my first time working with a group of testers too. So the feedback was just so helpful. And it's actually the reason why the darts look so much different than you might see in a normal sewing pattern because of what my testers had told me. So originally the dress only had center front darts. But we quickly found out that with only those two center front darts, everything got real pointy. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So I had to do a little bit of reconfiguration and we added some underarm darts. And then even for certain sizes, there are two underarm darts just to really help with the fit so that nothing is too pointy or baggy or anything like that. That's good. Brittany, you know, you've gone down the path of developing the Armely dress and some more patterns. What's your background in design? So I really started designing pretty young when I was about in eighth grade. I remember a specific memory of mine was going up into our attic and my mom had this old sewing machine and a bunch of scrap fabrics. And I went up and I pulled some scrap fabrics down and I took apart a skirt And I tried to re-put it back together. And that really started the obsession for me as far as sewing goes and designing. I just wanted to go in and figure out how clothing was made. My mom probably hated that because I took apart a lot of clothes to try and figure it out. So for the first, from eighth grade all the way to college, I just was kind of learning as I went. I just took things apart, played around messed up a bunch of times and kept going. And I thought it was a lot of fun. And I'm glad I started when I was young because you have that like childhood ambition and like, you don't care if it doesn't look good. (laughs) You just want to try and learn things. And so after that, I did wind up going to college, Savannah College of Art and Design in Georgia. And I got my bachelor's of fine arts in fashion design from there. (laughs) After college, I went I did a lot of different things with sewing. I went to New York and worked for a design company there. Didn't like it. Came back to Georgia, did alterations, did wedding dresses. And I accidentally stumbled upon the indie sewing community and started designing patterns. It's good that you've done the training and worked in the industry. 
Yeah, it, I learned a lot. I wasn't in the technical side at all, mm -hmm. but I became really good friends with the technical designer when I was in New York and seeing the difference between designing on paper, like drawing something out and how it translates into a pattern. Mm -hmm. I had never put the two together before. Yeah. So working with her, I was like, oh, this is really cool. I like this. <laughs> Where can this lead me? <laughs> That's really great that you a had testers who were in that category and B that you made those adjustments to suit them. It was definitely a learning experience and I'm really forever thankful to those testers for giving me like their great opinion. <laughs> Just no holds bar. <laughs> it's great to see that the Armoury dress has been developed for a variety of chest sizes and that you've taken the feedback from patent testers to make it more inclusive, size inclusive. So what advice would you give a new sewist who wants to make their clothes fit their chest better? Hands down, best advice I can give is just to twall, 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 or make a muslin. I know that's probably everyone's least favorite thing to do, but it really is so important to sew a sample or three <laughs> yeah. and adjust your pattern before cutting out your final fabric. I mean, that's definitely my biggest piece of advice. And then the second piece would be once you start getting your muslin together, just patience and pinning. <laughs> it's actually taken me a long time and a lot of strange maneuvers to get really comfortable with pinning myself, especially for the more challenging portions of garments, like the back of a dress. And I tend to enlist the help of my husband now, but before I met him, I had to learn, okay, how do I, how do I twist and turn and pin? And I just kind of like anyone else who's struggling out there with only yourself to pin, I suggest pinning, taking it off, sewing it up with a basting stitch, putting it back on and tweaking from there. That's actually how I did my wedding dress recently because my husband could not help me with that so I would literally just pin in really strange ways take it off sew it put it back on I love the fact that you've coined the term patience and pinning having patience <laughs> and pinning when you're doing the twirls it's really great that would be a really fun button <laughs> yeah patience and pinning patience and pinning <laughs> Brittany, thank you so much for coming onto the podcast to talk about the current sew along that's going for two months on the Sew Busty community. So again, thank you, Brittany, for coming on to Sew Organized Style Podcast. Thank you so much for having me again. This was a lot of fun. <laughs> Great. And have a lovely day, listeners. This episode of Sew Organized Style Podcast was produced by me, Maria Thea Harris, with permission of Brittany and Lindsay Rank of the Sew Busty community sound by bensound.com you can subscribe to so organized style podcast but with an s not a z on all good podcast apps and give us a five star rating and review you can also support us on our patreon account remember that all so organized style podcasts are free and there are over 250 podcasts available to keep you company and make you smile Post any questions or suggestions on our podcast website at soorganizedstyle.com or on our Instagram account at soorganizedstyle or on our Facebook page. We look forward to joining you in your sewing room next time. Stay safe, everyone.